The Giant's Necklace by Michael Morpurgo. The necklace stretched from one end of the kitchen table to the other, around the sugar bowl at the far end and back again, stopping only a few inches short of the toaster. The discovery on the beach of a length of abandoned fishing line draped with seaweed had first suggested the idea to Cherry, and every day of the holiday since then had been spent in one single-minded pursuit, the creation of a necklace of glistening pink cowrie shells. She had sworn to herself and to everyone else that the necklace would not be complete until it reached the toaster, and when Cherry vowed she would do something, she invariably did. Cherry was the youngest in a family of older brothers, four of them, who had teased her relentlessly since the day she was born eleven years before. She referred to them as the four mistakes, for it was a family joke that each son had been an attempt to produce a daughter. To their huge delight, Cherry reacted passionately to any slight or insult, whether intended or not. Their particular targets were her size, which was diminutive compared with theirs, her dark flashing eyes that could wither with one scornful look, but above all, her ever-increasing femininity. Although the teasing was interminable, it was rarely hurtful, nor was it intended to be, for her brothers adored her and she knew it. Cherry was poring over her necklace, still in her dressing gown. Breakfast had just been cleared away and she was alone with her mother. She fingered the shells lightly, turning them gently until the entire necklace lay flat with the rounded pink of the shells all uppermost. Then she bent down and breathed on each of them in turn, polishing them carefully with a napkin. There's still the sea in them, she said to no one in particular. You can still smell it. And I wash them, and wash them, you know. You've only got today, Cherry, said her mother, coming over to the table and putting an arm around her. Just today, that's all. We're off back home tomorrow morning, first thing. Why don't you call it a day, dear? You've been at it every day. You must be tired of it by now. There's no need to go on, you know. We all think it's a fine necklace and quite long enough. It's long enough, surely? Cherry shook her head slowly. No, she said. Only that little bit left to do, and then it's finished. But they'll take hours to collect, dear, her mother said weakly, recognising and at the same time respecting her daughter's persistence. Only a few hours, said Cherry, bending over, her brows furrowing critically as she inspected a flaw in one of her shells. That's all it'll take. Do you know, there are 5,325 shells in my necklace already. I counted them, so I know. Isn't that enough? Her mother said desperately. Nope, said Cherry. I said I'd reach the toaster, and I'm going to reach the toaster. Her mother turned away to continue the drying up. Well, I can't spend all day on the beach today, Cherry, she said. If you haven't finished by the time we come away, I'll have to leave you there. We've got to pack up and tidy the house. There'll be no time in the morning. I'll be all right, said Cherry cocking her head on one side to view the ne necklace from a different angle. There's never been a necklace like this before, not in all the world, I'm sure there hasn't. And then, you can leave me there, Mum, and I'll walk back. It's only a mile or so along the cliff path, and half a mile back across the fields. I've done it before on my own. It's not far. There was a thundering on the stairs, and a sudden rude invasion of the kitchen. Cherry was surrounded by her four brothers, who leant over the table in mock appreciation of her necklace. Ooh, pretty! Do they come in other colours? I mean, pink's not my colour. Bit big though, isn't it? said one of them. She didn't know which, and it didn't matter. He went on. I mean, it's a bit big for a necklace. War had been declared again, and Cherry responded predictably. That depends she said calmly, shrugging her shoulders, because she knew that would irritate them. And what 
does it depend? said her eldest brother pompously. On who's going to wear it, of course, Ninny, she said swiftly. Well, who is going to wear it? he replied. It's for a giant, she said, her voice full of serious innocence. It's a giant's necklace, and it's still not big enough. It was the perfect answer, an answer she knew would send her brothers into fits of hysterical hilarity. She loved to make them laugh at her, and can do it at the drop of a hat. Of course, she no more believed in giants than they did, but if it tickled them pink to believe she did, then why not pretend? She turned on them, fists flailing, and chased them back up the her eyes burning with simulated fury. Just because you don't believe in anything except motorbikes and football and all that rubbish, just because you're great big fat ignorant pigs. She hurled insults up the stairs after them, and the worse they became, the more they loved it. Boat Cove, just below Zena Head, was the beach they had found and occupied. Every year for as long as Cherry could remember, they had rented the same granite cottage, set back in the fields below the eagle's nest, and every year they came back to the same beach, because no one else did. In two weeks, not another soul had ventured down the winding track through the bracken from the coastal path. It was a long climb down, and a very much longer one up. The beach itself was almost hidden from the path that ran along the cliff top, a hundred feet above. It was private and perfect, and theirs. The boys swam in amongst the rocks, diving and snorkelling for hours on end. Her mother and father would sit side by side on stripy deck chairs. She would read endlessly, and he would close his eyes against the sun and dream for hours on end. Cherry moved away from her family and clambered over the rocks to a narrow strip of sand in the cove beyond the rocks, and here it was that she mined for the cowrie shells. In the gritty sand under the cliff face, she had found a particularly rich deposit, so they were not hard to find. But she was looking for pink cowrie shells of a uniform length, colour and shape, and that was what took the time. Occasionally the boys would swim around the rocks and into her little beach, emerging from the sea all goggled and flippant to mock her. But as she paid them little attention, they soon tired and went away again. She knew time was running short. This was her very last chance to find enough shells to complete the giant's necklace. And it had to be done. <laughs>